So I just got back from the Center for Civil and Human Rights here in Atlanta. I was really looking forward to coming and even though you know I'm someone who knows a bit about um, civil rights history in the U.S., it was a bit of an eye-opener. It was a great experience. It brought up some things for me. I kept thinking about what we could do as white allies and one of the first things I thought of is how important it is for us to shut up and listen to the stories that are being told to us for people who are being oppressed and have been oppressed. And this applies to every minority. So women and people living in poverty, it's, it's really important to hear these perspectives, especially if you're privileged not to be exposed to the oppressions that we have to deal with in this society. Another point that I thought about, um, about what we could do as white allies is to think about history, learn the history, know the history, um, know the people and why they did what they did, understand the climate. History isn't something that just happens in the past. People think it is. They're like, oh, racism or whatever. Like, it, it's happening today, and if you can't see it, then that tells us that there's an education aspect missing to that perspective. Um, if you learn about history, you start learning about how certain institutions were put into place by the oppressors and how those same institutions are continually oppressing people today. So whether we're talking about justice systems, law enforcement, education, it's all there. It's really important for us to know what happened and then seeing how it is continually happening. So there was this one exhibit where you got to participate in the, the Woolworths lunch room protest. You sat at this table and you put on these headphones and you close your eyes and you hear derogatory slurs and hatred and anger and your chair is shaking and, and you're just in this space of, of what people had to go through during that time. And I understand Martin Luther King's nonviolent resistance. I, I get it. But I also understand the anger. I don't understand how a lot of the activists at the time were able to put themselves in that situation. I mean, you had you had black people in the 40s and 50s and well into the 60s being lynched, being bullwhipped, their houses being bombed, um, segregation, torture, hosing, everything you can think of. You know, this was a daily thing for these people. And to have Martin Luther King say, okay, now we want you to go sit at this table or to, to participate in the bus boycotts or to walk in, in Selma. I, I don't know, man. I don't know if I could do it. I understand, I, I learned a little bit that some of them were trained and, and I get that, um, but for the people who weren't and they were just everyday citizens that had to put up with this bullshit every day to go, okay, now we want you to, to go put yourself in another violent position to be beaten, possibly killed for your rights. And I just, ugh, like, I don't know, I don't know. But it's a really interesting question to think about. It's like I don't condone violence and, and yes, Malcolm X changed his point of view later on, you know, going from by any means necessary and then moved on to kind of agreeing with, with Dr. King. It's like I don't condone the violence, but I understand it. People are allowed to be angry. People are allowed to be upset overseeing people being treated like shit because of how they look. 
you know, I'm fighting with that, I'm dealing with like people who are homeless. It's, it's so disgusting and it's frustrating. These are just some of the thoughts <laughs> that I had in my head today. And um, I just, I really hope that people, if anyone has the chance um, to go to the exhibit or the museum, um, it's a really, it's a really interesting and interactive place to go. Um, I'd really recommend it to anyone. Um, but if you can't, plenty of information to learn about history and civil rights movement and how it's still just as important today as it was back then.